Hello, a good evening and welcome to PM Express and today is uh, Corporate Wednesday. My name is Nanan Sakwa. Now today we're going to discuss something which everybody has been wondering and asking why, when is it going to end, when next, what place else is going to ban and then we hear illegal wires there, illegal wires there and every time there is something to do with electricity. Folks, my synopsis here say that last night, well, that's what it says, you know, last night, Makola number two market, popularly called the publishing market, was raised down by a raging inferno that lasted throughout the night and was still a force to contend with this morning. Traders said they had been voltage fluctuations prior to the blaze. Uh, what was the state of the electrical wiring in the market? Who did the initial work and made the adjustments? If poor wiring is determined to be the cause of fire, how would we identify the persons responsible and hold them accountable? I am sure it, if for no reason, the Energy Commission has developed the legislation to regulate electric wiring in the country. The legislation uh, addresses the issue of who qualifies to wire a building, what type of materials or cables are appropriate for wiring and how wiring should be done according to standards. In a bit to keep all of us safe, households are obliged to contract certified electrical contractors to wire their houses. Now I have with me, my extreme left is Dr. Nidako Asante. He is technical director for the Energy Commission. Doctor, welcome. And then to his left is Mr. J.B. Walker, President of Ghana Electrical Contractors Association. Mr. J.B., good morning. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. and good evening. Uh, welcome. Well, what was you say? Good morning. <laughs> and then to his left, uh, Mr. D. Graft Johnson, uh, representative of Ga Ghana Fire Protection Association. Guys, I believe we're going to have a very, very interesting chat. And I'm sure viewers at home have also got so much to ask. I'm going to try and tap into their brains and then ask you this question. But I'll start with Energy Commission. What, what is Energy Commission? What do you have to do? What, what is your role? What do you play? Thank you very much. Um, the Energy Commission has a vast uh, array of issues it has to deal with. But in particular, we are the regulator for the electricity um, sector. So we regulate Gridco, we regulate VRA, we regulate Azogli, Sunon Azogli, all the generation, all the distribution that's Electricity Company of Ghana, Netco. So we license and regulate them. We are also regulating the natural gas industry. So we hear of the gas plant going up. That's also our responsibility. In addition to that, we provide advice to the government of Ghana, so we provide advice to the energy minister on policy, and we plan generally about the energy use in Ghana. But in addition to all this, we have a mandate within our act which says that the energy minister can ask us to do certain things. And in this case, when it comes to fires, we are looking at the safe use of electrical equipment and distribution of electricity within premises. So on that basis, we were required to put in place the electrical wiring regulations which were passed into law in 2011, in 20th of December 2011, but actually entered into force on the 24th of February 2012. And all that we are doing now is towards actually implementing this law. And I'm sure we will to talk some more about it. <laughs> yes, we will. We will. Uh, JB, can I call you JB? JB is a nice initial. JB. Mm -hmm. President Ghana Electrical Contractors Association. Do your members abide by your rules? Because I presume that everybody who is a certified uh, electrical contractor should sort of join your, 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 your organization and work, you know, work according. Do they abide by it? Thank you. Uh, I think you've raised a good question. They are not because of the freedom of association we have in the country. Uh, I presume if we are being regulated well or we are being 
we come together, we will be regulated well and we will be having a mandate to operate within the country. And then whoever comes into the association or the enforcement will be lied on us so that we can regulate our members well. But because of the freedom of association, we don't operate in that aspect. People do their own thing and then people doesn't even care to join the association. And that has been our worry for all this time. So it's good that now we are getting a regulator to regulate the system. Okay, I'll move to uh, Mr. DeGraff Johnson. Uh, so th these guys are making your job very hard because you are Ghana, <laughs> you know, representative of Ghana Fire Protection Association. So uh, Energy Commission regulating wires and he regulating electrical contractors must be making your job very, very hard. Apparently, see, as a fire uh, protection association in Ghana, in fact, we've been existing for some time. But unfortunately, it's a difficult area because people do not even think that we exist. But now, well, thanks to Energy Commission bringing in the awareness concerning uh, fire occurrences, in properties and places, particularly in recent time in the markets areas. Our situation, we have members who are trained and regulated by our own regulation to afford members to provide services to property owners. Services like consultancy, design of fire, fire system in buildings. You must have a very difficult job because the, the very guy that you are protecting does not care. I mean, yes, he will thing. build a half a million house out and would not that, put a fire extinguisher in there. Okay. So, I mean, how I, uh, it's like you have to protect him from himself. How are you doing that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, the building had to be designed and be accepted by a local council. Which we don't. Uh, architect, which we don't. <laughs> Invariably, it doesn't come that way. But if it comes that way, then we see at every district council or district assembly, we have fire service authority, which is there, who is supposed to examine the building and approve of the building because of the fire, which in case it comes, where to pass, where to exist, what to do, and also the installation of fire, the immediate fire extinguishers, which must be appropriately installed. So that if there's a fire, but no matter how small it is, you can easily quench it without any problem. Okay, let me let me come back to uh, Energy Commission. Regulation of wires. Uh, how 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 are you able to enforce it? Okay. I think um, it's it's a process. Actually, we've only just started. This is really at the very beginning. Maybe to backtrack a little. The problem with a lot of these things is that there isn't an instant solution. We've had a, a law passed in 2012. We are now in 2013. But even to get the law passed in 2012, it took work that started two years prior. So we now have within the law that was passed Ghana standards on electrical wiring. And it talks about what equipment should be used. It talks about how it should be wired. It talks about all sorts of standards as to what sort of equipment can be used and so on. It took a while for those standards to be prepared. After those standards are prepared, they were incorporated into the law, which we now have. So now there's a basis on which we can enforce. Mm -hmm. The problem is the law requires there to be something we call a certified electrical wiring professional. Today, there isn't a single one Whoa. because the law has just come into place. So there's a process of now, okay. if you like, not quite training. Fortunately, within the Ghana Electrical Contractors Association, we have a number of electricians who have been certified previously by the distribution companies, Electricity Company of Ghana. I don't know whether Netco also did it to some extent. And they also, under a previous law, had the right to actually certify electricians. So we are first of all going to transition them into being certified electrical wiring professionals so that we have a core of electricians who would be mandated under this law to wire premises, which means that anybody who is not so certified will not be allowed to do so. 
So immediately want to eliminate people who are not properly qualified. Now, we recognize that there are people who, for one reason or another, are probably have the knowledge and so on, but haven't got any certificate. So we have a transition period of two years during which we'll provisionally license a number of members of the association. During that period, they would have to actually pass the exams and then be fully certified. Now, once we have these certified electricians, they also will have to do the wiring under regulation. So we have a set of documents which have to be filled in, specifically a, a wiring certificate, which would show that <coughs> this particular electrician with this particular number wired this house. And if anything happens to that house, that electrician will have to answer for it. If, should I say, if the cause of the problem was an electrical fault. Funny enough, I was just going to ask you that I walk into a pharmacy shop. Even though I don't see the pharmacist, I see a certificate there telling me that there's a pharmacist somehow in charge of this shop. So that even what the girl or the guy behind the counter gives me, I trust that the pharmacist has left him a message saying that if Nana comes here with a headache, give him paracetamol. So I take him and go. Are we now going to display certificates maybe an, under the meter or somewhere in the house? So that if somebody walks into the house, knows that even if it wasn't you, it means you supervised the wiring of this house and that you be, you know, at fault. I mean, how is this going to work? I think that will come from the Energy Commission. Let me come back to Energy Commission. Because the regulation is saying that we should be certified. They should certify mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. electrical contractors. So if there is going to be such regulations, they have to bring out or they have to indicate what we should do so that we can. We are now trying to give ID cards to members to identify them as a members who need to walk in and, w and take jobs. But without that, you are also not entitled to give a person who doesn't qualify to do that job for you. So we are all collaborating with Energy Commission so that they can regulate well and tell us what we should do so that we can eliminate all this quacking on oncoming uh, no, no, what's it going to be like? Uh, I finished building my house. Uh, Mr. JB comes to wire it, and then I need his certificate to go to ECG to say, give me a meter because I've been certifiably wired or... Correct, oh. correct. Basically, the electrical installation certificate will be a required document for getting electricity connection. Okay. Okay. So one of the things we are doing, and which is partly why we wanted to come on this program tonight, is that we are launching the wiring certification guidelines tomorrow at the Energy Commission. And these guidelines contain all the procedures for um, wiring your house and getting it connected. It's just the short form of what needs to be done to get a premises connected to electricity supply, who should do it, and just a brief introduction as to who the certified electrical wiring practitioners are, professionals are, and how they will be certified. Going f after this, we will start uh, certifying electricians, we'll start communicating with the public and with the professionals to let them know what they need to do, how they need to get certified, the procedures they have to follow. We've printed a number of these electrical wiring certificates. Each professional will be issued with his own. They're not pink sheets, but <laughs> they do have serial numbers. <laughs> and this time the serial numbers do mean something. They do mean something. <laughs> so they are numbered and they, we'll they keep track. Duplicated. They won't be duplicated. Okay. So the whole idea is that we will keep records and because they will need these certificates, when their booklet gets finished, we will randomly sample a number of those jobs to actually inspect and ensure that those premises were wired correctly. And any electrician who chooses to just use his certificate on something that he didn't wire, somebody else did, if that happens and the person he did it for didn't do it right, he could easily lose his certification. And we intend to enforce this. So it will affect people's livelihoods because if you have this certificate and you lose it, well, you have to re-certify. Re and that would have some consequences on your livelihood. So we mean to seriously enforce this. I think, re I think it's a good time because real estate is booming now and the need for uh, <coughs> proper... Uh, certified electricians it may come in handy, but I'm going to uh, Mr. DeGraff Johnson. The, 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 the uh, fires these days, especially the markets, and you're, you know, you are supposed to, you know, educate us on fire protection. 
I don't know what you're doing or what your association have come up with because it's, it's almost embarrassing that there are three main things. They are overcrowded, uh, there are no access to uh, go and uh, extinguish the fires when they start, and they are not wired properly. Almost every market has the same story, but as we speak, they still, the story still stands. So how is your society educating them or making them aware that, look, your livelihoods, your life depend on them? Because it's like we've, we're very detached from fire hazards as, as a people. We are very detached from fire hazards. And it's when it happens, you know, we are the first person to cry and, and wail and, you know, call on to God. I mean, how are you tackling it? Apparently. See, thank you very much. It's a very nice position that we wanted to discuss. First of all, what is a marketplace? We might decide to find, define what is a marketplace and then get the concept right. Then we as fire protection comes in to examine if the if there should be fire, what do we do? Where do we provide fire extinguishers? Where do you provide exit point? Where do we install maybe major fire extinguishing point? But so, so long as we have the, our market in this formula, in fact, I will tell you, it's difficult. So we, we need to classify our markets, make sure before certain or lessons can take place. On the part of education, fair enough, we'll be able to educate you know, society, the seriousness of, of fire and what fire can bring to anybody. But the big question is that how much will education do when the situation is staggering in our eyes as to so many people you know, forcing themselves into one small area to do buy and sell. But then, if I have to make some suggestions for market, as I already said, that a market must be classified, we should be able to control the use of the market. Say like that, like the Accra uh, mayor said, I mean, by 5.30, all, market, the, all markets, the, let me use the word under the bracket, uh, African market, the open market, mm. is closed. And then, of course, we have other people who come in maybe to do the general cleaning up, sanitation works, clean everything. Then, by 6.30, the security, the security people take over the market for those who will be roaming inside to inspect, find out what is happening at any other place, and those who also will be roaming about outside it to do what is it. By certain time in the morning, maybe 10 a.m., the market is open for operation. We must control ourselves in any case. I don't know which of you guys, I'll throw the question and if you can mm -hmm. help me out, but has anybody been to check uh, Kanishi market to make sure that it's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. near, because, I mean, that would be a disaster and a half. <clears throat> I mean, with all these markets burning, I don't know whose jurisdiction it will fall under, but has any been to check to make sure that Kanishi market is not on the brink of also fire? I don't know who. I'll tell you that no, I, I was once there, and uh, I wasn't happy. The way I saw some electrical wires, you know, straying around. And of course, who controls the load of the tenant? Who controls the load? He can today come and install air conditioning. Tomorrow he will come and install uh, rice cooker. The next day he can do a whole lot of things. They do not think about the, about the, what, the service life, what has happened to it. All that they know is that they are providing their services. But a crowd market, like they said, the condition market, at least needs inspection and testing by a competent electrical contractor to find out what is actually going on there. As we said, you know, fire can strike up any time. I'm, I'm going to take my break. When I come back, we're going to look at the quality of wires that they have been used. And then I'll go to JB and find out that once this certification comes in and, you know, qualified electricians get that sort of monopoly or preferential because we don't have a choice but I go to them, are they going to stink us and overcharge us? We're coming straight back.
Hello and welcome back. Just before one of the break, we were wondering if anyone is being to Kanish. Because we heard of Apogloshi, Medina Market, uh, Mala Market, Kokumba Market, you know, uh, Kantamantu. But everybody, or we all seem to ignore Kanish. Now, uh, at the break also, doctor made a submission that we've been lucky that every time the fire has been on, there's nobody around. But that could also spell disaster. But I'll go to... Uh, Mr. Walker, because you know you are an electrician, and so we are looking. And most of these wires, most of these markets have been blamed on bad wiring. And you've been to Kanishi, and what's the scenario in the Kanishi market? Um, one's been to Kanishi market, and as we are aware, Kanishi market has been existing for ages, mm -hmm. but nobody does repairs. I think in this country, we don't actually go in to renovate or do repairs. You could see the wires hanging there. Nobody cares about that. But then it might cause something whilst nobody is there. Because if the main switches are not rewired or they are not uh, changed over and something trip off and it doesn't take off the power, there you have a problem. There the power set in. So we should regulate or we should, we should find time to do this inspection. We have a team. The electrical contractors have a team that we do auditing every now and then. But when you go there, you tell people, please, you see why your wires do it or rewire your place. They doesn't care. But they might be even, they will wish to paint the place on the wires, the existing old wires. That is not well done. Please, let's see what we can do to eliminate these fire outbreaks. When we found loose uh, wires, you know, when the plugs are being taken off and on, the tears and where that set in. So the loose contacts that set in, that brings the heat. So we should always check all these things and we should allow the auditor, the contractors to do the checks if the, the, there should before be a we'll backing to, from the Energy we'll Commission. To doctor, I want to find out again from you. Once you've gotten your certificate and you have that monopoly to do the works, how are we sure that you're now not going to say, well, it's, you know, X amount or you cannot wire a house? Because I know that I can't go anywhere else. I need to seek somebody who has a certificate to wire my house. He's now charging me astronomical. So then I might be forced to go back door and find somebody who I think, well, he knows how to do it. Really, he hasn't got a certificate. You know, how are we sure? We have a regulation within our, uh, this, uh, our association. We've been uh, having a regulation on price-wise. It's just like tearing uh, uh, whatever, hairdressers, as they are prices and other things. We also have a price con uh, the regulations that we regulate 1 point, 2 point, how much we charge, the regulation of uh, costing and all that thing, which we have been implementing it within the association, which we have it let done. Me, let me and break so it down. Let's say, <clears throat> uh, if I call you to f fix a plug, is there somewhere in your book to say that fixing a plug should only take eight minutes? Therefore, eight minutes is times, you know, maybe uh, one CD per minute. So it's eight CDs for me no, to fix. that is not how we regulate our way. It depends on points. So the number of points that within the vicinity are what charged. What points? What's points? From one end to another end, that is the, regu that is the, the, the wiring regulation that we use in uh, setting up our price code. What if I have a long haul? Yes. If so that's have, one point? No, it isn't a one point as we, 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 we term it. It look like if we, we, have, we have charges for various houses. We have boys' quarters. We have a whole room. We have various, how many sockets you have in the vicinity. And, and we is, charge is according to... Is he available to, to us so I know that he's not overcharging me or... We won't charge you, but then mind your property. Are you caring for your property or no, no, you are no, looking no. for cost material? I want good work done, but I want yes, to pay so, a fair price. But then you have to but pay now for we, whatever now, you deserve for. You see, uh, they, they, they're giving you a very good advantage because you've gone to school to learn your trade. And indeed, we need to use you to stop our houses from burning. But still, it doesn't mean that you need to, you know, over, over, over prices. We do. So I need to know that to wire... A system, maybe a 10 by 10 room wire is 100 cities. So if my room is 20 by 20, it's times 2. or I don't know, some, something that I know that oh, it shouldn't cost this much because this is how it is. 
We have ECG price list that we have. ECG every year turn up and then they do a list of material costing and then labor costing as they did. We have labor uh, commission. They also regulate all these things. It has been existing for ages. So we go contrary to that and we collaborate with them. Energy commission have a price code. So we compare them. ECG have a prices for the year. Maybe they revise their prices every uh, uh, term of uh, regulations or ty time of uh, years. And then so Energy if Commission... I call, if I call, let's say, three electricians to give me a quote, would I be out by just 50 CDs, 100 CDs? Because sometimes it isn't. You know, it's, it's really... just in between. Unless, you know, they unless the really person is not qualified electrical contractor. He needs something for just his pocket. And that is the... So the once I get a qualified one, even if I get three, I will be... You have you. a regular... Oh, doc, just doc, a, let, me, let me come to you, because now you are giving them the power. Yeah. So how do we know that, you know, we're going to get charged fairly, okay. you know? Um, I think you've raised a good question about the, the fair charges. And I think the last time we went to the association, we did recommend that they would put out some pricing guidelines, exactly what you said, so that the consumer, the house owner would get some idea, some guidance as to how much he should expect to charge. Having said that, I mean, and we do, we, we do actually would like that to be available, published maybe annually or whatever, so that we have a good idea. Having said that, however, I think there is a tendency for us as Ghanaians to want the cheap side. Okay. And if you want quality, you've got to pay for it. Safety is not cheap. I've had so many um, experiences with People going, oh, this, it's okay, it won't cause any problems. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, you know, safety always seems to be troublesome, difficult, unnecessary until you have the problem. And then it costs you so many times more. I think when it comes to materials, it's not that China produces cheap goods. China produces cheap goods, medium price goods, expensive goods. We go, we Ghanaians go for the cheap ones and bring them. Then we say China no good. <laughs> you know, it's our choices. It's the choices we Ghanaian consumers make which are causing us some of these problems. So yes, the electrical contractors will be more expensive because they would need to follow certain rules, guidelines. They'll need to make sure they use quality materials. They can't use cheap materials which do not meet the standards. So they will cost you more. I agree we'll try and make sure that those costs are not exorbitant, but they will cost more, and we should be prepared to pay for fair, it. Fair price. Fair price. Now, wires. Uh, most fires are all attributed to wires, and to the layman, if I buy a wire, it's a wire. I just plug it, electricity comes. Okay, so there are, there, are, there are certain things about wires. If they are not manufactured well, even within the insulation where you can't see, there might be breaks in the wire. And ev if there are breaks, every time it joins and breaks and joins, you get sparks forming and it's heating. And that heating is what can trigger a fire. You also have situations where the insulation itself, with time, it gets brittle, it comes off, it wears, you have short circuits, heating, fire. Or we're still electrocution. So materials... They are standards for a reason. You know, a wire is not a wire. You know, there's good wire and there's bad wire. So, and apart from that, some of them also, the thickness of the gauge is not constant. So you have thick portions, thinner portions. And a wire is rated for a certain amount of current. If it gets too thin at a certain point, it overheats. And then, again, it can break. So there are these reasons why... We would say buy wires which are certified, which... Doc, I'm going to come back to you, and I want to find out houses that have already been poorly wired, how would you, how would this new regulation affect them? I'll come back to you on that. Uh, I, Mr. Dicker Johnson, the fire service is now saying that, you know what, because of our indiscipline, they're running out of money, because every five minutes we are calling them, and they're coming out with their foam, which apparently is very expensive. You know, what, what, what do we do? Because we can't continue down this trend. But now it looks like it's a trend because it's only, uh, you know, half the year. And they're complaining that, look, we've run out of, of, of money. Uh, you see, the institution of fire service, in fact, they regulate, they, they form part as regulator at the same time too. They perform the work of firefighting. There are two things here. They are regulating and performing their work as firefighters. 
our association as fire you know, protection. We provide the services in the provision in the sense of providing maybe the fire detecting system installation, particularly in offices, commercial houses, even in the homes. As I said, in the kitchen, we would advise that everybody should have at least, you know, wall-mounted fire extinguisher. We don't know when, particularly those of us who are using gas. And one thing with gas also in, in, in our residences is that though uh, fire gas detectors is not common in this country, we should by this time try to think about gas detectors in our kitchen. So that if there's a leakage, it will detect and give an alarm. Say so that you become aware. And then, of course, you know what to do. And in our homes, we should also remember that sometimes, you know, you've been, you have, you will not know where the escape route is. So it is necessary to give signals, you know, on the places where it does fire. But what to do? Our decoration. <laughs> It's necessary. It is not necessarily, you know, it will, it will come into the form of a decoration. decorative <laughs> sign that says, you know, run here. Uh, the the, the, the uh, Ghana Fire Protect, uh, is it a government body or is it an you know, independent a, 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 a independent associated body, you know, included in the LI of the fire, fire I mean, uh, authority of the state. So we are at, uh, stakeholders and we are at the arm of the fire service. The, the use, the, like I told you, we offer consultancy services. We do installation of fire extinguishers, fire equipment, and we also run training courses for in house training for staff of premises so that if there's fire, what they should do and what to do once in a week or once in a month, fire drills in order. You're not making a lot of noise, though, your association. Yes, because see, as usual, it goes down, it goes with the economy. <laughs> <laughs> it goes with the economy. Yeah. <laughs> so, what the, now that properties are coming up, yes, yeah, people will just again. come up and then find out what uh, the fire protection people can do to for them. Doc, uh, houses that are already wired. Now, I'll tell you one funny thing. I moved into this house, right? Now, in order for me to get 250 volts in the house, I need to go to the kitchen and plug the kettle. And then the current will be regular. As soon as the kettle goes off, everything goes down. So eventually I had to get a certified electrician in to come and look at it. And he said they had put too much load on yes. one side and this is all good. And then had to put his piping and, you know. The, so people like me, you know, who have to put their kettle on before they get regular current. You know, how do we come under this rule? How do we... I them. think the, there is an important um, provision within the rules. So after you've gotten a house wired and it's connected to the electricity grid, there are periodic inspections required. So for every building after 10 years maximum, it will need to be inspected to, to find out whether the wiring is still fit for purpose or whether some rewiring is required. Now we believe that for public buildings, we'll, be more, we'll focus initially on the public buildings. Mm -hmm and I suppose markets, since obviously markets are, are a major area where we need to focus. But for buildings which um, have been wired already, I think one of the problems we have is that we don't do this periodic checks. So what, Ghana is 50 odd years old now. A lot of our buildings are getting to that sort of length. They have not been rewired. We need to go through them again. It could just be, for instance, that our markets are mm, sort of similar ages and therefore they all have wiring which is going bad. We don't really know the cause or causes of all the fires. It could be different causes. It could be the same cause. At this stage, we are looking at just fires which are caused by electrical faults. And in that context, these regulations will address them. So we are looking at rewiring where required, inspectors who will look specifically at wiring uh, failures, wiring irregularities, and rectify them. So for instance, when we have our inspectorate ready, some of them will go to Kaneshi Market and they will check. And if they find something that needs immediate attention, for instance, they would have the powers to close the market. But with all these things, there's no painless enforcement. 
So if somebody's electricity has been disconnected and so um, remedial action is taken during that period, they won't have electricity. And I think as Ghanaians, we have to accept that the way we have done things for so long can't continue. We're going to take another break. And then when I come back this time, I want to know, is there any way we can go on the market and check to make sure that the goods in the shops are the right standards and not substandards? Because if I went to the shop and I have 10 CDs and there's a plug there and it's three CDs, and there's one there and it's like 11 CDs. I am one CD out and I need the plug. Am I going to go home and tell the wife that, look, forget it. We can't buy the plug today. Or am I going to buy the three CD one, which doesn't make regulation? We're coming back. Hello and welcome back. You know, just before one of the break, we were looking at our dilemma, right? You have 10 CDs in your pocket. You go out on the market and you need a plug. There's one for three cities. You probably burn out in six months. But, you know, when you're desperate, six months is very far. And there's one that's very good, but it's 11 cities. You're one city short. Do you go home and then find that one city and then come back into town? I'm asking, why don't we just tackle the problems from the shops? Where you go to the shops and find out if the thing is substandard and it doesn't meet Ghanaian standards, then... Don't even sell it at all to tempt it. But before I let my guest talk, uh, on the f this is the Fifth National Widow Alliance Conference uh, 2013, which is being organized annually by Mamazimbi Foundation. Uh, this will be held on Saturday, 22nd, June 2013 at the Trade Fair Center La. from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Widows will receive free medical examination, uh, be motivated, have fun, and be educated for a better life. And I know what some widows go through, and I'm sure uh, if you've been widowed, especially recently, make it a point to go and meet, you know, like-minded people and have fun with it. Uh, the sponsors for this occasion is Unibank, uh, Caring for You, uh, Jiwa Homopathic Hospital, Indomin Instant Noodles, Ice Cool purif uh, Purified Water, Mobile Engineering Services. Supporters are Bloom's Cake and more, Danny's Decor, Last Hour Catering Services, Cocoa, Pro Cocoa Processing Company Limited, uh, Ghana International Trade Fair Center themselves. Uh, media partners are Multi TV, TV3, Metro TV, DDP, CTFM, Joy FM, Adum FM, uh, Media, Fan Burn, uh, Web Soft Solution. And it says, please text MZF to short code 1962 to support the fifth. National Widows Alliance Conference. Uh, this conference is also to celebrate and unite, uh, and unite uh, the United Nations International Widows Day. Uh, remember to be there. Uh, maybe if you're not a widow, but you know you have a sister, you can join in the celebration. Doctor, <laughs> now my dilemma in the shop: Is there any way? The uh, anyway, actually, you are an electrician. So this, this, this falls within your jurisdiction, uh, JB. Is there any way, you know, you, they, they should get, you know, the, the ones that falls below standard? I mean, sometimes some don't fall below standard. They're just not as good as one. You know, they're in between and they're they are okay. And I actually like things in, in between. I think top ones are too much. No. Why don't they get the bottom ones out? So I don't end up using it and then causing a the fire. Uh, the National Standard Board need to certify most of this thing into the country, as you know. But then, if they are getting the right materials into the country, all these things will not happen. You wouldn't even see those wrong or bad ones to go and fix there, which will last you for lesser time. But rather, if you buy the proper ones, it's going to last you for years and you save money. Mind you, if you buy the shorter time, you're going to lose your property sometime, and then it's also going to spend money for double times. So I think you buy the right thing. Despite the, wrong, the, the, the cheaper ones are there, buy the right thing at the right time, and then sustain your money for other years. You wouldn't bother to even no, check. You, that, that's, when the, when, that's when you have the luxury of money. I'm talking, you, sometimes you don't have the luxury of money. 
But if you went and there was no 3CD1 for you to compare with, then fine. But if, if it's given to you and you have to choose between a plug or a meal tomorrow, you, you might just buy, you just buy and pray to God that nothing happens. You know? so, so, and then, you know, most so, often than not, something happens. Then we should depend on the standard board so that the, 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 the un, unqualified or on uh, standard, substandard materials should not come into the country. I presume that. I think that will work. And we wouldn't even have all these fire outbreaks because if you installing bad materials there, we are heading to uh, losses of materials and our properties. Doctor, so, I mean, you were saying you go into the shop and the guy tells you that, oh, no, no, don't buy this one. I thought this one is no good. You, you have to buy this one. So then you, then you ask, so who, who then does he sell those <laughs> ones to? <laughs> you know, can, can the, the Energy Commission play a part in this regulation? Or? The, the Energy Commission is, is, to some extent, already doing this. I think the problem we have is that there's a huge task ahead. The Energy Commission has in, already in place a number of uh, standards and labeling uh, programs. We are doing it with fridges, air conditioners. We are doing it with bulbs. Um, and with those ones, we are taking an active role in enforcing the standards of those goods. But that was on our energy efficiency mandate. I didn't even mention that one at the beginning. So on our mandate on ensuring the efficient use of energy, we have standards and labeling to ensure that only efficient equipment is used. And when it comes to that also, it means that sometimes somebody will import goods with his money and bring it in, and it doesn't meet the standard. Today, we are seizing goods there are some we have put in a warehouse and they have to be re-exported or destroyed. And we are enforcing that. Now, when it comes to cables, plugs, we haven't got, we, the Energy Commission, have not as yet put any regulations on that, except that now we have these wiring regulations, which we have sponsored. So as part of that, yes, the materials now come under that. The prime uh, responsibility with, with standards authority and they would necessarily seize at the port if they find goods which don't meet the standard. But again they have probably overwhelmed the number of things they regulate, they have standards on virtually everything. So we'll probably need to look at that specifically as I first of all do some monitoring in the market to see what goods are dangerous and have them removed and then identify them at the port. But it will take time. It's not going to be an instant thing because most of these things we have to be measured, like you said. It might not be perfect, but is it okay? Is it dangerous? We have to have some clear determination of those things before we can do I that. I go to Mr. Jacob Johnson. You know, you notice in Ghana all our plugs are three pins. But then, you know, you go on the market and there's ions with two pins or mobile phone chargers with two pins. So, I mean, does it mean uh, it's allowed here or it's not allowed here? You know, how... How does that system work? And I see, I see it on your, on your yeah. book. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we, we are allowed to use two pins? I, um, I don't know. Is there uh, a camera that can pick? Uh, to, you know? to talk on, on this one, see, uh, <laughs> plugs, plugs, like any other electrical material, has a, a characteristic of the load it must carry. That is the number of arms that so, it, so it can carry. You look at the screen, uh -huh. and you know, there's, a, there's a green tick. If, or, if, I, yeah. if I could you just know. talk to this one. What okay. you have, the one with the red cross, yeah. you'll notice that that is actually a, it's a continental European plug standard. Mm -hmm. We don't allow that. It's not that within is. the regulations. It's not allowed in Ghana. You'll probably find some, but it isn't. We do allow two pin plugs for um, things which are not earth. And you see in the center of the green, the box with the green or the circle with the green tick, there is a two-pin plug there, which is for equipment that is not earthed. But, but what's the difference between this and, and, and that one? They're, that they're one actually pins. needs to be earthed. That's oh, the important thing. Okay. It's a two-pin plug, but there's a third recess, How, which is earth. the earth. Oh, okay. okay. So that we don't allow, because it will mean that the earthing will not be provided. Okay. But the two-pin plug you see in the center of the circle with the green tick. That doesn't need. That is an equipment that doesn't require earth. Okay. Now, what it means is that you'll need an adapter so that you don't start sticking things into the thing okay. too. But it is allowed. Okay. So in terms of regulations, the new regulations specify exactly which kinds of sockets are permitted in the okay. country and those and let, which are uh, not. Uh, JV, let me show your, your, your picture. That yeah. is also another 
one that I think if the camera can zoom in, uh, we should all, if you've seen it anywhere, report it, disconnect it, yes. you know, whatever it is, just make sure there's no power going through it. I mean, that is just suicide waiting to happen, isn't it? Look at that. You see, you see. This is bad and practice. Install it the system in the system. You know, so you there, you tell I think them these, these are some of the things that are really yes. uh, uh, causing a havoc in the system. Mm. Uh, yeah, this One this is, this is yeah. this is your headache. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is it. That is it. That is the headache <laughs> of the whole thing. But uh, uh, so, host, I, I, my point. W one point I want us to consider very carefully is electrical power in the kitchen in recent times. Mm -hmm. Most of the kitchen equipment that are being installed in the kitchen. They are no longer, in fact, the IE regulation, the, the regulation you know, regulates a certain amount of circuits that must be on particular um, circuit. But the way our kitchen is being of today, Why you buy somebody, something, I mean, a rice cooker, three cloves, it cannot go on the 13 amps. But it has been wired for kitchen has been wired for 13 amps. So it, it means that there is a need to change the wiring of particularly kitchen. I see. There is a fryer. It's about 3.5 kW. But the kitchen has been wired for, according to the regulation, that is what they, we are doing. But if the changes are coming up, then we must come up, we must regulate it to come up that this time, Appliances in the kitchen should take direct power from the distribution board and then maybe must be of 30 amps so that you have 30 amps plugs taking that load. But as we go, if you go to most kitchen currently, they are all 13 amps. This is where the trouble starts in the homes. But by law, it's fine. The, no, by law, by regulation, it's fine, it's fine, but it's not meant to. <laughs> because the client or the tenant, that is the equipment he's buying. The property owner wired in mind that you use not that much appliances in the, in the kitchen. Where, where is the break? I mean, where, where uh -huh. is the break that, that, what, the, that it didn't appear in the regulations? Yeah. Here again, the regulation will allow for the fact that you should, you should request the tenant you know, for his load pattern in order to en enable you, you as electrical contractor, every electrical contractor has certain knowledge of electrical engineering, no two ways about that one. You'll be able to know, know what the load pattern in the kitchen will look like. If a kitchen design has changed by certain order, that is number one. Within the market, within the market areas, similar things also do happen because of the load uh, then somebody's installing air condition, but then it has been wired for 13 amps. Okay. And then it becomes another problem. We, as a fire I mean, a protection association, will do all our best to provide fire services for such areas by installation of fire extinguishers, by training people on how to work on fire, by allowing people to trace their exit routes. It's very, very important. If you are in a confined area and you don't know the exit route, when there's fire, you know, I mean, uh, you are crazy. Thank you, you very much. I give, I give you guys 30 seconds, mm -hmm. 30 seconds, and then we'll wrap up. It's been an interesting. Uh, I'll start with JB. You just, what, what the way forward for certified contractors? Yeah, we're glad this regulation is coming force. We would like the Energy Commission to assist us as they are using us so that we will regulate all the electrical contractors within the system so that we don't have anybody going astray. If the law is being passed, I think people will mandatory come into the association, which we need that backing as they are, back, they are selling or they are uh, backing fridges, they are putting more inputs into fridge and uh, incandescent bulbs to get out of the system. We want all these unqualified contractors to get out from the system so that association to stand. You cannot go to a, a pharmacy shop and then buy any drug without having an assistant of a pharmacy. 
that is the regulation is okay for us. So we need them to back us so that we will have every electrician or every contractor to be under this regulation so that we don't have so much problem in the country and it will eliminate the fire outbreaks. And Don't you have the last word. Thank you very much. I think um, Ghana is moving forward. Things haven't been perfect, but we are moving forward. The regulations are out. We will be doing the first exams for certified wiring professionals in November. We are planning that within the next two years, only certified wiring professionals will be allowed to wire premises. And we are asking the public to cooperate with us in this. This is a journey we are starting today, and all things being well, in the near future, you will see people with their ID cards and their certificates asking you to employ them to wire your premises. And in future, you should insist on that, not ask anybody else without the correct uh, certificate to wire your premises. And together, we'll make sure that there will be no more electrical fires in Ghana. Well, guys, thank you very much. With me in the studio today, let me say thank you to my immediate left is uh, Dr. Nida Kuwasanti, Technical Director, Energy Commission, and then Mr. J.B. Walker, President, Ghana Electrical uh, Contractors Association, Mr. DeGraff Johnson, uh, a representative for Ghana Fire Protection Association. It has been a very educative conversation, and I'm sure you viewers have enjoyed it. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back here to do it all over again. My name is... And Anansa Kwawen, have a good evening.